Hey everyone, this is John Buck back with yet another Discrete Time Linear Systems video, The Fun Never Stops. Uh, in this one, we're going to talk about uh, how do we go, if I give you a frequency response in a rational form, how do I find the difference equation? So this is kind of the flip side of the coin from a video I've already recorded and, and you should be able to find on YouTube that says if I give you the difference equation, how do I find the frequency response? This shows that we can drive that road in the other direction and get backwards from h of e to the j omega to a difference equation. So let's see how that works. So switching over uh, to the whiteboard, again, our topic today is finding the difference equation from a rational frequency response. So for this video, just to show you a typical example, if I have a causal LTI system with a frequency response that looks like this, h of e to the j omega is just to make up numbers, 8 minus 19 e to the minus j omega plus 27 times e to the minus j 2 omega, and the denominator is 1 plus 7 e to the minus j omega minus 12 e to the minus j 2 omega. So again, just making these up, what is the difference equation? In a few weeks, we'll see more uh, practical versions of, of frequency responses and difference equations we want. But for now, we're just practicing with simple examples. And the key to this is basically to go the other direction we did earlier, which is to start by saying, I remember that the frequency response h of e to the j omega and the frequency domain, it's the ratio of the output Fourier transform to the input Fourier transform. So I'm going to set that equal to my equation here. So I have 8 minus 19 e to the minus j omega blah 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 in the numerator. 1 minus 7 e to the minus j omega minus 12 e to the minus j 2 omega in the denominator. And so I'm trying to get back to something where I have y with things I can use with the delay properties in x. So I'm going to multiply both sides by x of e to the j omega and whatever's in the denominator on, on the right hand side. So I multiply both sides by this so that on the right-hand side, the x's will cancel out, and I'll have y times what was in the denominator on the, uh, on the, right, the left-hand side. And on the right-hand side here, I'll still have the numerator, uh, but the denominators will cancel out, and I'll have x. So when I do that, other people think of this as like cross-multiplying, that I take this numerator times that denominator and put them on one side, and then I take uh, this numerator times that denominator and put it on the other. That's, that's the effective result of multiplying both sides by this. That's where it comes from. So when I do that, I'll have y of e to the j omega on the left-hand side with the stuff that was on the denominator. Right? When I multiply the left-hand side by this, the x's cancel out. I have 1 plus 7 e to the minus j omega minus 12 e to the minus j 2 omega. On the right-hand side, I have x e to the j omega times what was in the numerator. So 8, right, when I multiply the right-hand side by this big term here, uh, the denominant, the, the, these two things cancel out, and I'm left with x times what was in the numerator. So 8 minus 19 e to the minus j omega plus 27 e to the minus j 2 omega. And so when I do that, I can now multiply these through. So let me do that next. So I end up with y of e to the j omega plus 7 e to the minus j omega times y of e to the j omega minus 12 e to the minus j 2 omega times y of e to the j omega is equal to 8x of e to the j omega uh, minus 19 e to the minus j omega times x of e to the j omega plus 27 e to the minus j 2 omega x of e to the j omega. So it's a wide equation, but each of the terms are pretty easy to handle. And the next step now is to take the inverse Fourier transform 
of each side. So if I scoot that up some, let's work on the left-hand side first. Inverse Fourier transform of y, well, don't overthink it. Inverse Fourier transform of y b to the j omega is just y of n. Then this term, I say, well, this piece here is the delay property, right? This is the Fourier transform of y of n minus 1, and then it's been scaled by 7. So the next term is I get 7 times y of n minus 1, because I've used this delay property. Similarly, this is a shift by 2 property, right? This is a delay by 2 minus 12 times it with linearity. So just taking one term at a time on the inverse Fourier transform, I get the left-hand side of my difference equation. Similarly, on the right-hand side, I get 8x of n minus 19x of n minus 1. And then I scoot over so we can see the last term. Plus 27 x of n minus 2. Right, so that's, when we're all done, that's our difference equation. It's actually pretty straightforward. Just the tricks to watch out for is sometimes people get pieces of this upside down, that they put the two numerators together and the two denominators together. But it's actually to remember, what you're really doing is multiplying both sides by the combined denominator, the product of the two denominators, and when things cancel out, I get to the right difference equation. So that's kind of short and sweet how, to, how we do it. We can work this in the op in the direction we just showed, where if I start from not any frequency response, but if I have a frequency response that looks like this, where it's a fraction, and both the numerator and the denominator are things like this in terms of e to the minus j omega and higher powers in omega, then I can do this to get back to a difference equation. And so that's something I could build out of a block diagram, and we'll see that, uh, other ideas like that going forward. All right, so that's all for this video. I'll stop here, and I will see you next time.